I'm here today with a very special vintage Neumann U87 from probably the 70s or 80s maybe. And this is a microphone worth somewhere around $5,000 today, so quite an expensive microphone. But I'm also shooting it out against some much more reasonable, uh, cheap modern microphones, uh, cheap in comparison at least. This is my Stellar X2 that has a K67 capsule that runs around $200. Also a nice mic, but a very different sound. I also have my custom-modified MXL990 with a K47 large diaphragm capsule in it from Dockman Audio, and that is a $60 mic with roughly a $100 capsule in it. The stock capsule in this is a small or maybe medium diaphragm condenser capsule, and it doesn't have the best tone or the best noise floor, so I wanted to upgrade it. So these are all true large diaphragm condenser capsules and it's a little difficult to get them all in the shot here and I'm shooting this kind of impromptu because I've got to return this mic to its owner unfortunately it's not mine now this Stellar X2 has occasionally been marketed in some YouTube videos as a U87 killer for cheap and uh, it doesn't really sound anything like the vintage U87 now they're both condenser microphones they're both large diaphragm condensers so they have that much in common but the modern microphone is much louder and also much brighter and has a, just a different tone. The U87, in comparison, is a much darker microphone and perhaps flatter. It is a nice sounding microphone. It's a great sounding microphone. I would say it has more character and uh, the X2 is a little more of a neutral sound to my ears. And the K47 capsule is also a little more kind of vintagey, darker sounding with more upper treble around. 3 to 5k, whereas the K67 is more boosting around 10k. And the U87, I would say, has the flattest mid-range and bass response, though it's not exactly a flat response by any means, but it has a, a particular sound. To my ears, it sounds a little bit like a dynamic microphone, for a condenser at least. It's got some of those characters, and it's a nice sounding microphone. Now, would I ever spend $5,000 on a mic? No. If I was going to spend $5,000 on microphones, I would buy a whole variety of different sounding cheaper microphones and uh, geared towards different applications, but I also don't need to do that either. Unless otherwise noted, all this audio is completely raw from the microphones. However, I am going to level match them because as I mentioned, these modern microphones are louder. Otherwise, there's not gonna be any EQ or processing. However, later on, I am going to show you my own corrective EQ for these two mics to make them sound more like a U87. Of course, you can't exactly do that with EQ, but you can get closer if you like the sound and you want to turn your mic into a U87. You can kind of do that, but you really sort of need a U87 for reference because everyone's got a different voice and it, it's just not going to really work otherwise. So I'm going to read an article here written by Sweetwater about the U87 and some of the history of Neumann. So we have plenty of examples of these mics and I will be switching back and forth between the mics so that you can hear just how they sound. So let's begin. In the 1960s, the new transistor was making serious inroads into the tube-driven world of pro audio. In 1967, Neumann's large diaphragm U67 tube condenser microphone, which the company had introduced in 1960, was replaced by the solid-state U87, which sported modern field effect transistor circuitry and could be powered by phantom power rather than requiring a separate power supply for each mic. Engineers, producers, and their clients loved the U87, and by the mid-1970s, it was an industry standard found in every world-class recording studio, and it still is. Walk into a session and you would see U87s everywhere. On piano, vocals, toms, overheads, guitar cabs, brass, strings, congas, you name it. The U87's popularity is easy to understand. Not only did the mic usher in a new era of audio fidelity and reliability, but with three selectable polar patterns, cardioid, omnidirectional, and figure eight, Plus a switchable high-pass filter and 10 decibel pre-attenuation pad, the U87 is incredibly versatile and an ideal choice for a range of recording techniques. When you're striving for fidelity, clarity, and authoritative presence, the U87 with its ruler-flat mid-range and gentle presence boost is your go-to mic. We all need vocals to shine in the mix, and the U87 was created for this. You will find it was and still is the vocal mic of choice on innumerable iconic recordings. Piano, grand, or upright, when you need an acoustic piano to sit pretty in a thick track, 
a couple of 87s will get the job done. On an acoustic guitar, aim an 87 down at the 12th fret from about 14 inches away and you're ready to record. On electric guitar cabinets, the U87 is a perfect on-cabinet or room mic choice. Countless hit records feature guitar parts, recorded with a dynamic or ribbon or both relatively close to the speaker grill and one or more 87s further away. Pointing it at the center of the cone at a distance of 12 to 18 inches is the preference of some engineers like Ken Scott whose engineering credits include guitar luminaries like George Harrison, Jeff Beck, and Steve Morse. If you want a live acoustic ambience in the sound, positioning the guitar cabinet in a stairwell or bathroom can make an effective live echo chamber. Again, the U87 won't let you down and will capture the live acoustics accurately. As always, experimentation with polar patterns and mic positioning in the room can deliver unexpected sonic rewards. Let's talk about miking drums. If you've got space in the mix for gargantuan toms with massive impact, close miking each drum with a cardioid U87 will do the trick. Not too close, though. You want the drums to breathe, and don't want the drummer hitting the mics. Used for overheads, a pair of 87s offer the cutting power you'll need for a focused stereo image that holds its own in an aggressive rock or metal track. We've even used them on kick drums. Just be sure to engage the 10 decibel pad. The U87's three polar patterns give you impressive flexibility when it comes to exploring different recording techniques. With two 87s, you can implement stereo techniques such as spaced pair, AB, XY, including Blumline, ORTF array, and mid-side. For full orchestra, add a third 87 for the minimalist and highly effective Mercury Living Presence technique, three spaced Omni 87s across the orchestral soundstage. Record to three tracks, panned left, center, right, set your mic levels for peaks, and then leave those level-matched faders alone and let the conductor balance the orchestra. If you find you need spot mics to fill in, the U87 is, again, a great choice. In 1928, Georg Neumann founded the company that bears his name and introduced the first mass-produced condenser microphone, the CMV3, aka the Neumann bottle. Ever since, the Neumann badge has stood for unwavering quality. Neumann's instantly recognizable diamond logo is more than a corporate logo. It is a quality seal. Every microphone that bears the Neumann logo is a testament to this proud tradition. This level of excellence requires rigorous quality control to maintain Neumann's status as a leading manufacturer of studio microphones. Neumann's are not assembly line products. They're handcrafted in Germany by highly skilled technicians. The distance between the membrane and the electrode of a mic capsule is 35 microns, just less than the width of a human hair. The layer of gold applied to a capsule diaphragm is just 0.03 microns thick, equivalent to 208 atoms of gold. Even minute levels of contamination can adversely affect sonic characteristics, which is why Neumann mics are assembled in a state-of-the-art clean room with monitored dust levels under 100 particles per cubic foot, demanding conditions on par with the production of semiconductor chips and heart catheters. But it's not enough to build one great mic. The real trick is to be able to manufacture multiple units that all sound identical. To this end, Neumann sets the tolerances of each Neumann mic to the minimum possible variance as compared with equivalent Neumann products. This is what some mic manufacturers do with matched pairs, but Neumann does it for all their microphones. When you use 287s to capture an accurate stereo image, you can do so with confidence. Well, there's your unsponsored ad read, courtesy of Sweetwater, and you can go pick up a vintage Neumann made in Western Germany for only $5,000 on refurb if you so desire. But um, I don't know if you need to. That being said, the U87 is of course a great sounding mic and I've enjoyed playing around with it. I have of course recorded fresh IRs on all my cabs, which you will see in my upcoming Cab Pack 5 whenever I finally release it because I keep adding more to it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Smash like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Here you can hear the off-axis rejection of the microphone, and namely my wall, which doesn't have any acoustic treatment right there, so uh, that's what a wall sounds like. I hope you also appreciate this ridiculous mic clip, such as it is. I uh, tied it up with string to another mic clip because I don't have one that fits this, so that's what I've got going on here. But don't worry, it's nice and secure, and it's soft, and it's warm, so the mic is doing just fine.